Life Groups. Thank you for joining us for week three of our six-week series on hope. It has been my prayer that this series would be a blessing and an encouragement. Now, one thing I wanted to point out as you get started, that in this week's study, maybe you notice we've made some bonus questions. Now, those are marked with a B. And I know for our group, we were not getting through all the questions as we were doing the study. And I actually heard from some other groups that that was true for them as well. So, so listen, the, the important thing, it's not about getting through all the questions. The two goals for this study are to, number one, personally reflect and apply the message from Sunday. And then number two, to go a little deeper on that topic. And if your group had a great discussion about God and the Bible, don't worry if you didn't get through all the questions. Okay, so this past Sunday we studied Psalm 42 and we talked about the issue of despair. And we looked at some startling statistics on how loneliness, depression, and suicide continue to increase here in the U.S. Especially amongst teenagers, depression has increased by 63% in just the last three years. And I wonder why? Why is there so much despair in our country? I mean, from a purely materialistic standpoint, what do we have to be depressed about? I mean, for instance, even if you make minimum wage, $7.25 an hour, that would put us in the top 8% richest people on planet Earth. We've got air conditioning and refrigerators and automobiles. 81% of Americans now own a smartphone. 77% have high-speed internet. Over 70% own a flat-screen TV. There have been so many amazing breakthroughs in science and medicine and technology. I mean, it's not like previous generations where everyone was dying of smallpox or infected with polio. I mean, we are so blessed. The vast majority of Americans have disposable income and they have food to spare. We're throwing things out. We have endless sports and entertainment to distract us. We've got video games with amazing graphics. We can binge watch thousands of shows on demand. We don't have to wait a week for the next episode to air. Thanks to social media, we can stay up to date and connected all the time. We can instantly be in touch with friends from college and family, people who live on the other side of the world. And so again, my question is, with all these advancements in prosperity and technology and medicine, in some ways it makes no sense of why despair would be on the rise. Unless, unless the Bible is right and none of those things really satisfy the longing in our soul, only Jesus Christ can ultimately fill that void. So the passage we're about to study together is in Isaiah 40 which uses the analogy of an eagle. Isn't it an awesome delight to spot an eagle in the wild? I mean, they are such majestic creatures. And when I see an eagle and I'm driving on the road, man, I, I probably become a hazard because I'm like craning my neck and I'm trying to see this amazing miracle of creation. But when you sit there and you watch those eagles soar for a while, it really is amazing. Yes, they need to flap their wings to get going, but after that, they just kind of effortlessly glide through the air. They ride the wind. And the reasons they can do that are, first of all, they're very light. They only weigh seven to 14 pounds, which is amazing considering they have about 7,000 feathers. But then their wingspan is huge. Uh, an eagle's wingspan can get up to seven and a half feet wide. And so these enormous wings allow them to harness the wind almost like a sail and then they're able to catch updrafts or thermal drafts or, or even in a storm they can ride the wind and, and, and just glide. And so this is the image, that beautiful e eagle soaring on the wind that Isaiah uses when he talks about those of us who hope in the Lord. So as you get into this study tonight and as you have a discussion, may the Lord bless and invigorate your time together.